We're taking a look at an AP Physics C problem from 2006, uh, Mechanics Question 1. Um, in it, we've got a small block uh, of mass, 0.5 kilograms, and it's placed on top of a long slab, whatever that is, um, with a mass of 3 kilogram, as shown up here. Uh, initially, the slab's at rest, and the block, which we have in yellow here, um, has a speed v naught of four meters of set four meters per second to the right. There is some friction between the block and the slab, and it has a coefficient of friction of 0.2. Uh, no friction is between the slab and the horizontal surface down here in black on which it's moving on. So in part A, uh, we are asked just to identify the vectors uh, and label them of the forces that are acting on each of the block and the slab respectively. Um, when we look at the block, uh, it has a weight acting on it due to gravity. Um, it has a normal force equal to that weight. And as it's trying to move to the right, the friction between them is going to push backwards or to the left on this block. When we look at the slab, it also has its own weight due to gravity, but it also has the weight of the block pushing down it. So we'll call that um, WB. Uh, it also has a normal pushing up on it equal um, to that combination. And in this case, because the friction was pushing the block to the left, it's going to be pushing the slab to the right when we think about that. That's because these frictional forces are equal and opposite. Um, you just can't have some magical friction out of nowhere. Um, and if we think about this, as this block up top is going to be moving to the right, it's going to be pulling in a way this block underneath it to the right as well. So it's going to start speeding up. Um, in part B, we do see this speeding up. Uh, at some moment later, whenever that is, um, but before the block up top reaches the far end of the slab, um, uh, both the block and the slab it obtain identical speeds. Uh, and they want us to calculate that identical speed there. Well, the way we can do this is to conserve momentum. Um, we initially start with some mass at some velocity, so that's a momentum there. And this initial mass that is moving um, is just the mass of uh, the block, so a half kilogram, and it's moving at four meters per second. Um, there are no other initial momentums there because the slab is stationary. This has to equal to all of the final momentums that we have. So this would be equal to the momentum of the block plus the momentum of the slab. Well, since they both have the same final velocity, we can actually combine like terms here. And our final mass is going to be the combination of the block plus the slab. And that's going to have some final speed at the end. Uh, what this means is when we look at this, 1 half times 4 is just 2. Um, this is just 3 and a half over here, which we'll divide. So 2 divided by 3.5 is VF. And we find that VF here equals 0.57 meters per second, just doing 2 divided by 3 and a half. Um, in part C, we need to calculate the distance the slab has traveled uh, at the moment it reaches VF. Now, you could approach this using kinematics. You could find the force being applied to the slab from the block, set that equal to MA, find different accelerations, use kinematic equations. You can do that. We're going to use energy instead because it's going to be way easier for this problem. And I'll show you why after we solve it. Um, what we can say is that work equals a force by a distance. And there's normally a cosine there because that's a dot product. Everything's moving in the same direction here, so we can ignore it. Um, and that's going to equal a change of energy just by the work energy theorem. Well, when we consider the slab in this case, and that's what we're considering here, the slab, we need to think, what is the force acting on the slab to cause it to move? Well, that's the force of friction from the block. So this force of friction here was, uh, and it still is for the problem, um, it's going to be the normal force, which is mg for the block here, uh, multiplied by the coefficient of friction. And that's friction is fun right there then multiply by the distance the block goes. And this equals the change in kinetic energy, which is 1 half m for the slab vf squared minus 1 half m vi squared. But vi is 0 here, so we could just ignore it, really. We don't even have to put that minus 0. We can you know, just get rid of it. Boop, boop. So let's look at what we have. Um, if we take a look at this, we know what VF is. We have it from above. Uh, we know what the mass is. We know this is 0.2. That's 9.8. We know this is 1 half. So let's go solve this. Um, if we just move around this equation, uh, we can see that XS 
the distance the slab ends up moving is going to be the mass of the slab times its final velocity squared divided by the, the two from the one half. So there's your one half mv squared. And then you're gonna get the mass of the block, gravity, and the coefficient of friction. And that's all right there, the force of friction. Um, if we throw all of this together, what are we gonna get? Um, let's see, the mass of the slab was three, uh, 0.57 squared times three then, divided by two, divided by 0.5, so it's like multiplying by two, um, divided by 9.8, and then divided by 0.2. That gives us a quantity of 0.49, or if we round it up, we'd get 0 0.50 meters, okay? Um, doing it this way is also really nice because in part D, we're asked to figure out what is the work done by friction on the slab from the beginning of the motion until it reaches the speed VF, which means that we just need to say work is equal to the force of friction times the distance we've traveled, which is literally what we just did above it, except now we know the distance. So this final answer here just quickly becomes um, M of the block times G coefficient of friction. So that's friction right there. And then times the distance we've traveled, uh, which is excess. And that's just our 0.5 from above. So if we wanted to just fill in a bunch of numbers here at the very end, uh, we could do that. That's just going to be 1 half times 9.8 times uh, 0.2 or 1 fifth. So that's going to be like 10 over 10, essentially. And then there's your 0.5. So we're going to get approximately at the end 0.5 joules of work. Now, going back to this up here and why I decided to use this over um, some accelerations. And if you're looking at the solutions, this doesn't even pop up in the College Board solution set, but we used it anyways. So can we even do that? Ugh. Well, let's come over here. If I take the work energy equation that states that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work applied, well, I would have one half mass, and if we're thinking about the slab in this case, let's call this the mass of the slab, times the final velocity of the slab squared minus the one half m slab v initial squared equals a force times some position. Okay, That's the traditional work energy equation. Now if we take this work energy equation, we can actually uh, move it around a little bit. Um, we could call the force right here, we can actually call this ma if we wanted to. Um, and if we do so, we'll quickly see back uh, that we get a, uh, a kinematics equation from this. Um, I'm also going to take this entire term right here and slide it to the other side. And in doing so, I'm going to have 1 half mvf squared equals 1 half mvi squared plus, and this would be ma here, times some distance. Now, if we just look at this, and I know I've kind of ignored the subscripts of the slab and the block and whatnot, so these would be slabs on the left and block on the right, whatever. But if we kind of look at this, if I quickly get rid of these one halves by multiplying everything by two, and if all of the masses were the same, then all the masses could divide out. They're not in this problem. We'll see what exactly happens. But this equation here, this is a classic kinematics equation. Vs squared equals Vi squared plus 2ax. In our problem, though, and what the College Board has done, they've solved for the acceleration of the slab. This takes work to do, and I'm lazy, and I want to get this problem done quick. So instead of putting this as an A there, well, I'm going to put in what that force actually was. That force, if we do remember, was uh, due to the friction. It was mu mg. That was the force of friction there. And at this point in time, we knew for our scenario that vi was zero, so that went away. Well, that's nice. And if I take a look at this now and I solve this for x, then all I have at this point is, and also uh, remembering to put my mass back because this mass can no longer divide out. I'm gonna have the mass of the slab times the final velocity squared divided by two mu mbg. Well, when I divide by the two, this is just kinetic energy again, which I had up here. And then when I divide by that force, mu mass of the block times gravity, that just gives us back excess. 
So I'm using technically a kinematic equation, but the way we get this original kinematic equation is in a way relating it back to work energy anyways. So we're, we're free to use that in this problem. Um, it's not exactly what the College Board did, but I think this way is a lot faster. If you look at what they did, they solved for a bunch of things. It takes a bunch of time. Super annoying. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's the whole problem. A uh, quick little thing there, just four parts to it. A um, little bit of conservation momentum, a uh, little bit of forces up top, and some energy and work in the bottom. So that's it. All done. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. With that, classically, this problem is finished. Y'all take it easy. Check out some more videos. Best of luck on the AP test, and uh, adios. See ya.